Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now in the last episode, we were on phase two of my crystal oscillator factory, which is to say that phase one was doing the general layout and placing 101 machines. Phase two was the water extractors and some of the transport infrastructure like the trains and the truck stations. Phase three today is gonna to be placing the manufacturers, which is like the end product machine, and getting the raw materials into the factory so that we can then power it all on. Now hopefully, we'll reach our target of 60 oscillators per minute. So there's a lot to do, and without further delay, let's begin. So of course, on the right side of the screen, we have our to-do list of what the targets are. So getting the manufacturing up and running, the mining, sorting and logistics, and then, if I've got any time left whatsoever, some of the cosmetics. Now cosmetics is something I've been kind of working on uh, since the previous episode. I say kind of because I've been exploring a few different styles of things, so... I've changed- I basically- <laughs> it's a very schizophrenic build right now because we got like this concrete brutalist looking style down here Then there's just met metallic weird looking windows and stuff up here Trying to think about how I'm gonna do a glass roof and I just thought to myself, you know what? I don't know. I'll have to just keep experimenting see what people think and what they like and um, Pick one style and just stick with it. I'm leaning towards the concrete style and I'll explain that in a minute But first we have to pick up a couple of things really quickly so down here at my little storage bay, I've left my jetpack and a few other things. Um, so let's just get that, sorry, hover pack. So, what I need to do just really quickly is add all the different things onto the taskbar. So we're going to be building 32 manufacturers, and I've blueprinted them, so a crystal oscillator manufacturer. And I'm also going to need this splitter configuration that I've just kind of quickly designed just to literally fit underneath these. It's very specific to this build, so I might just delete the blueprint after it's done. Um, which is why it's not in a category right now. The other thing I need to change is there's 64 floor holes. Don't actually need those anymore. Right, so now I know that I'm just lacking a little bit of concrete, which I think I've got some over here. Okay, looks like we've got everything we need over on the right-hand side of the screen, so we're good to get going. So I'll just show you really quickly what I was kind of working on in terms of aesthetics. A lot of this stuff uh, aesthetically is, like I said, temporary. But if we just run over here and do a quick jump out... So this is kind of the brutalist looking style that I'm pretty happy with. I've gone with this raised sort of foundation in here with two big windows either side and a big foundation just running through the middle. Half of it creeping into the factory, half of it creeping out of the factory. And I'm really liking and digging the look and feel of this, you know, especially as the sun rises. You can imagine if that was the wall all the way around, it would look quite cool. Of course, we'd have lights and things like that. Now, I was experimenting with this side of things. Um, some of the panels are actually chopped away. But the idea of having like these three window panels in a row and then like a sort of a beam that goes all the way around it in a kind of a rectangle. And I didn't even show it, but or you probably didn't even notice it. But this whole thing was like an idea I was working with as well. And I just, I don't know. There's something about it where I'm just like, I just don't think it looks as good as the concrete. But people have been asking me to experiment for a while, so I've, I've been trying. I just can't really figure out anything that looks better than... Just big, hefty lumps of concrete breaking everything apart with giant pillars and stuff. So you let me know what you think. But this is why I think in future it'd be great to stream because people can give me ideas as I'm doing it. All right, so what I'd been doing between episodes was building out the area that's going to hold the manufacturers. So we didn't see that before. So it's basically just layers of flooring. So we have a logistical layer, then a manufacturer layer, another logistical layer, and another manufacturer layer. Each layer is going to hold 16 manufacturers, right? So one floor for 16, and then a logistical layer, and then above that, another 16. So we need to divide up all the materials between two separate floors. And that's just because manufacturers are so big that I felt like we needed to break them onto two different floors. So I'm just going to get rid of these. This is where I was trying to work out the blueprints for how these manufacturers are going to be spaced. I ended up not going with that, so it's just a little leftover residue. If you have anything left over from the blueprint. It actually still has the entire blueprint bounding box, uh, which is throwing me off there a while ago. So one thing I'm just going to do really quickly, I'm just going to grab power from the train line, drag it in here a little bit, and we can use that with our now hover pack just to fly, get a little angle, and start building out where these are going to go. So first one's going to go here. Now I use two separate single foundations rather than using a two-layer foundation. Because I like the top layer to be a different material than the bottom layer, because I'm weird. Uh, well, not really because I'm weird, just I think it aesthetically looks better. We can have asphalt on top, we can have concrete on the bottom, and that way it looks like two separate rooms. It just looks a lot better that way. Alright, so down here we're going to grab floor, 
Just zoop it out. Just to where I am. This is temporary. Because the way I've blueprinted these manufacturers, it uses space below. That should save me a little bit of time long run. So let's get our first manufacturer. Here it is. So obviously if I was putting it here, it's too high up. Put it down here, it's perfect. So just have to do that for the first one. People have said that you could just build it into the blueprint. I just, I don't know. I prefer doing it this way. It's totally fine. Uh, but you can do you any way you want. So we'll just go like that. That's where we need to start. That gives me a little two gap between the first foundation. The first foundations around each edge should be for walking. Although I'm not going to raise them, I don't think. Like I normally do raised windowed panels, uh, glass foundations. But all of the logistics are going to be on the bottom floor. So there's no reason for glass flooring because we're not going to be able to see anything underneath it. There's no real need for that. All right, so that's our first one. Now, really quickly, what I'm going to do is actually just paint this asphalt. I should have done this between episodes, but alas, I didn't. Um, so we'll just go with asphalt. Grab that. And there we go. Because once the machines are down, especially manufacturers, it's really hard to put down asphalt and see what you're even dealing with. Because um, of the, there's very little gaps on it. You can't really like see where the center of an asphalt foundation is very easily. There's very little patterns on it, I should say. All right, don't worry about the going over the plastic bits. That's fine. Or the co coated concrete. Yeah, I should have done that beforehand. Kind of forgot about it, but I just realized, like, oh, if I'm going to be putting down these... It was the crack of dawn. I felt like I should start the episode while we have maximum day daytime and brightness. All right, so we've got our first one down. We're asphalted out of our minds. Looking good. Let's just switch now to a regular jetpack. That accurate. Okay, everything's accurate. All right, so let's just get the other ones. Blueprint. We can activate blueprint mode. Look at that one. Rotate it around. Two, three, and four. So we need 16, so it's going to be a 4x4 area. Now, in case people are wondering, what's with the road barriers? Again, to get my spacing correct, there's actually they're not actually touching each other. There's a bit of room between them, and that was to evenly space it out for this area. So when working out the spacing in the blueprint designer, I had to throw in these things to give me good spacing between the bounding boxes of the blueprint itself, just in case you're wondering why that's there. Uh, because, of course, when it becomes a blueprint, it creates a new bounding box for every object that was in the designer as one big collision box, if you will, and they snap to each other. So to prevent the blueprints snapping to each other, leaving too much space, I was able to throw the road barriers in, create a bigger bounding box, and that gives them natural spacing between each other, all the machines. And all I have to do is just remove the road barriers. And there we go, just like that. 16 manufacturers all in place. Looking good. Painted already. They should have their recipe, which is crystal oscillators. Not doing any overclocking on these. Just keeping it all consistent uh, to keep the power usage nominal. Uh, all right, let's go up a floor. So this is not temporary. This will be here, but obviously the look and feel of these things are just temporary right now. And we're going to go up a floor, and this is the next logistics floor. And then we go up again. And then we have our manufacturing floor too. Nice and bright up here. Probably going to have some sort of skylight on this. Not too sure exactly what I'm going to do with it just yet. Let's just paint this asphalt again. Actually, before I do though, I would rather um, know what I'm working with just first off. So let me just grab this, bring that up to here, bring this up to here. This is just so I can fly with the hover pack. All right, there we go. Okay, so here... A space of three should be fine. Very same as what we just did downstairs. Alright, blueprints. We have 16 more to go. Same sort of situation. Rotate it around. The, for me, I'm looking at the lifts on the left. Don't want them touching the other foundation. And then this needs to come as close as it can so it's bordering. And then two out. There we go. And that's that. So now I'm just really quickly going to do the asphalt again. Okay, cool. That's asphalt. All right, let's just put down the next uh, 15 machines. All right, that's number two, three, and four.
Now, you might be wondering why blueprint these at all. Of course, they have their floor holes built into them. They also have numbers on the back using the crystal, quartz crystal. So I'll have to go around and update the numbers. But um, they just say 0, 0 right now. So we'll number them from, obviously, 1 to 32 in total. And there we go. If we just get a little distance on that, that's it. 32 manufacturers might have if I do have a big skylight up here I'll just use beams to connect the to kind of hold the power lines if that makes sense all right nice that's pretty fast um, so but we're not done yet we have to now do the logistics for these guys so luckily I've also blueprinted this to help us out and make things go a little bit quicker and I'll just show you what I've got in mind for it so the tricky problem here is I have four floor holes over there so there's three materials coming into these manufacturers. We've got quartz crystal. I'm after all, we're forgetting. Is it rubber? <laughs> uh, let's see. Crystal oscillator. Yeah, it is actually. So quartz crystal, rubber, and AI limiters. I just wasn't totally sure on that. That comes in via rail. Yeah. So quartz crystal, rubber, and crystal and uh, AI limiters are making our crystal oscillators with this particular recipe. Uh, so the one out, that's going to be the output. That's the crystal oscillators out. And they're going to lead back downstairs underneath the train station so that if we need to send crystal oscillators to some other factory somewhere, we can easily do that. Um, the other three are going to be held in that same depot room that's underneath the train station and get their materials, bring them over here, and then shoot them out towards these two floors. Now, the thing is, because we're up on two different floors, we're going to have to do some crazy splitting and stuff with these things, but it should be fine. Um, but let's just focus on feeding the machines first. So we'll just zoop this. Get the asphalt first. Get the floor back on. Get our concrete floor underneath. And there we go. Now we just have nice floor holes pretty much consistently all throughout the floor. Uh, I'll actually start on the floor down below one. I'd rather start down here. So again, we'll just do the same here. Okay. Again, start with the asphalt on top. Now, of course, uh, when you blueprint these floor holes and the elevators, the lifts, sometimes they kind of bug out graphically. So graphically, they might look a bit weird sometimes, but it is working. Once I reload the game, that'll fix itself, which I might do just through the throughout the episode at some point. But I'll let you know when I do that. Let's just put the floor out this way as well. It's amazing how messy it looks and how good it looks just once the floor is on. <laughs> Alright, it's like, oh my god, it's all totally messed up. And then you just put the floor on, it's like, yes, now it just looks super clean. Okay, so next up is a new blueprint that I've made, Splitter Config 2. Because <laughs> I did have another variant of it and it wasn't really working right. But I've saved it for later anyway. So what I need to do is just for the first one, it's a little awkward, just position myself underneath. Right underneath where it needs to go. Step to the left 4 because that's about the space that an elevator needs to kind of connect into a splitter from. And then basically find the point where this will fit in nicely. And then the others should just kind of snap from there. They won't easily snap. I'll still have to do a bit of rigorous placement. Uh, there. I don't know if you can see it, but on the right side of the screen, there's a, a green line next to just the overlay is kind of blocking it. But that should be where it goes. So just to make sure I've done one right... Well, I obviously haven't. I forgot to step to the left. Whoops. Okay, sorry. My bad. Alright, let's try that again. Close. So, same thing. Get in the center. One, two, three, four. Move up until we see that green line, which is there. And it looks like we are lined up, as he said in Interstellar. TARS. So just to make sure one works, we'll just go mark one, snap it in. Yep, looks good to me. And they're hooked up just nicely. So obviously I'm stacking the, the reason, um, there's a few reasons that some certain things are all messed up. These towers are kind of messed up. The tower over there, its doors are like <laughs> leading nowhere because I actually ended up having to raise these floors a whole nother like layer because I realized 
that with three goods coming in, the belts are just going to be like super spaghetti and chaotic and overlapping each other and all sorts of problems. But in order just to stack them nicely, I just gave myself a little bit more headroom. So I gave myself room for four. The reason being one of these is going to be stacked as the output leading out over them and three are the inputs. If I had a fourth input, it would be even messier and I'd probably need another layer. Um, but these manufacturers are only using three ingredients, so not too bad. All right, so we have our first thing in place. We know that it's lined up correctly, so we'll just get this one. So we'll just stand underneath the one that's, if I can even just measure, it's on the line here, but creeping over just slightly. Okay, face it towards me. On the line, but creeping over, and then we look for our next green line. It's so hard to see, but there's one there. I'll just run forward and trust my instinct that this is going to work. There. That should be those all lined up. And as, as the space is correct, seems correct to me. So what we do now is we just hook them up with their belts. Uh. <laughs> Alright, like so. And that's that. That's pretty much... Well, obviously you need to put in the lifts, so mark one out of our minds. But not nicely, they just snap into each other now. No need for additional belts. Yeah? And there we go. So that's, I mean, I don't know how much faster you can do that. I mean, there might be a faster way of blueprints, but pretty fast, right? I feel like four manufacturers all with their, like, lifts and stuff hooked up. Pretty, pretty happy with that. Just get rid of that. Okay, cool. So that's one layer done. I got to do this for the next three layers. Very low on plates, though. Am I going to run out? Nope. Almost, uh, exact amount of plates, actually, man. That feels good. All right, well, for this floor. Okay, so there we go. So that is 16 manufacturers hooked up all with their lifts and stuff. We don't have their outputs hooked up, but just their inputs. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to go fetch a little bit more iron plates, and then we'll head up and continue on. Alrighty, so now we have to hook up the actual output. So these are the floor holes that will be sending out crystal oscillators. So they're only going to need a Mark 1 belt, and we need to set them up with mergers rather than splitters, of course. So to gauge our first one, we grab a, mer grab a merger, have a look at where it actually is. So it's about there. One, two, three, and four. So that's where we need to be. And then we come down here, and it's in between the two splitters, actually. So we'll just go like that for one. I'll just move along this kind of grid just to keep it aligned. This axis, if you will. And just do one more down at the end here. And that needs to come up. I'm just after building one upstairs, I think. <laughs> did I just do that? I think I did. That was a mistake. Alright. Okay, so we'll get rid of these. These are just the foundations. Gone. And now, grab our Mark 1 
lift to just come out of the ground and snap right into it. Easy peasy. And then grab our belts, mark one, and connect them up. And we have to do this for every single row of machines. But luckily, someone's already done it. Hey! <laughs> and I've done it upstairs as well. So all of upstairs is now hooked up in the same way. So that's manufacturing floor one, where all the machines are. And then we go up to logistics two. And we can see that they're all in place, ready to go. All right, so that's effectively the manufacturing floor pretty much done, but we still have to do some of the logistics. I don't really know, on the sidebar here on the right, manufacturing is like its own thing and sorting and logistics is its own thing, but I guess we'll just finish all the belts on the manufacturing floor and then we can toggle that one off. So it's still a little bit of work to be done. So we need to hook up the actual inputs and outputs to these things here. All right, so let's begin. So the way we're gonna do it is I'll grab a splitter. Uh, just to actually, I don't think I've really gone over what this is, right? So we just have three belts, all Mark V, going into a splitter, hitting an elevator, and going up to a floor hole. That's all it is. I've just stacked them on top of each other, and it's just manifold feeding each line. So that's basically how it works. So what we need to do is divide this, I think, eight ways, because it's gonna go in here, and then it needs to hit four layers there and four layers up on top. So let's begin. So we'll grab the splitter. This is the center foundation between the two different layers. So we'll just keep it in the center somewhere like here, I guess. Aiming that way. And I'm gonna stack it three ways. Because we have three things coming in. In fact, I can even put a merger on top coming out. And that should work. Right, so let me just grab this foundation, drag this across. Some very long concrete, actually. Might have to make a run for that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to make a really quick run to get some concrete. It's in the box down here. Because we'll need it for just like the little poles that we'll be putting down. I'll just keep it rolling so you can see what I'm doing. Concrete is in this one. Alright, should be plenty. That's our rubber train coming by. I'll have to get a... The turbo train, turbo, yeah, it's called the turbo train, but the turbo fuel train should be coming along here as well. Uh, so let's go, let's just fly upstairs really quickly. All right, we're back. Just trying to think how this should be done. All right, let's just, oh, I know, I know. Okay. So that's baby, that's two, and that's three. And that's four. I'm confused with its output. Yeah, cool. Alright, only the top ones matter. The other ones are just for height. Okay, <laughs> it's such a complicated thing, but you just really need to get it right on the first go. But I think I've got it. Let's just fill this in as well. To there. So simply enough, the bottom belt needs to go into the bottom splitter, and they all need to be traveling along the same way. One, two, just like that. Come along down here. One, two. And in you go. Then what I need is a stackable pole. And those two. Okay, so this needs to come out and do the same. So it needs to go to about there. Is that right? Yeah, one. And just connect into the stackable pole. And this one needs to start here. And go into the stackable pole. And then the poles can just connect into their respective splitters. Now the merger, conveniently, is right in front. All right, good, love it. So now we have this tower in the center that can just split evenly into everything. So to do that, we'll need a splitter here, going three ways, or sorry, stacked three times, and the same here, and that should be it for this floor.
Okay. So you go in there. You go in there. Okay. All good. And then the merger sits on top. Actually, the merger might not sit on top because these are placed at an offset. So we'll figure out the merges last. Uh, but the important thing really is this. So these three are going to go here. One, two. Is that right? One, two. So this is going to actually have to be a stackable pole. And that just goes right in there. Yeah, this is actually going to look really nice. I didn't really plan that, so that's quite good. <laughs> this just worked out. It's not too difficult of a problem. I think I've done it right anyway. Okay, so these just need to then get in there. So that's the first two layers done. Two out of eight, right? So we're splitting here. And then splitting again evenly. So this keeps us really even. Which is good. Alright, same thing over this way then. One, two. Stackable pole instead. And it needs to be layered twice. Alright, so that's the three goods all being fed there. Uh, so the last one is just hooking these guys up. Beautiful. Alright, so that's all the splitters. So the, our three ingredients are all now being divided into all of the manufacturers. Excellent. But we need to get the crystal oscillators out. So... <clears throat> how can we do that nicely? I know. Let's just chop this bit away. I'll put that back in a second. This can go right there. Yeah, let's make it a Mark V. Why not? This could be a Mark I, though. So that's the oscillators into the merger and out. And then there'll be a merger... Oh, hang on. Have I done this wrong? No, 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 no. It's all going merged onto the one line because it's going to be 30 oscillators per minute. So one line can take it all. So it's totally fine. So apologies. I have to remove this as well and just do the same thing again. Yeah. So get rid of that bit. So upstairs, I won't make that mistake again, at least. And then this bit could just curl around, but instead I'll actually... Uh, put a merger into it just because I feel like it'll, it'll look a bit better. Alrighty, so mark one, in you go. Mark five, out. And that connects into there. And then the last one will just be over here. So same sort of thing. Alright, so this is the last merger. And that's to face the opposite direction, obviously. And merged. Alright, so the very last thing then is just hook these back up to where they were. I know there's so much UI and arrows and weird stuff on the screen, but once we get it all in place, I'll put all that away and you can just see it nice and cleanly. Alright, there we go. Maybe I'll turn on my torch as it's getting dark. Alright, so there we go. So it's just four layers of belts. The top one is the merger, the bottom one are the splitters, the bottom three. And that's it. That's everything. I think that's done fairly well. <laughs> to my surprise. But I think it's good. Yeah, so we've got our three ingredients coming in at their respective heights. And then our one merger coming out. At the same height. So yeah, looking good. So now it's like, oh, but have you thought about upstairs? Well, kind of. The reason that these are so... They have so much space 
is very much for that reason. So let's, uh, of um, dealing with upstairs, I mean. So let's just snap onto something here, if we can get some power. This is just temporary power so we can fly. Actually, don't do that. We're up to the next logistical floor where I'll have to do it all again. But we'll just connect the two floors and then I'll do the actual copying of the bottom, basically, if you know what I mean. Uh, because especially because it's nighttime anyway, so it's a bit awkward to see. Right, so the way we can do this is if we... This is the logistical floor. We'll drag out a times two foundation. Get ourselves a floor hole. Yeah, actually, let's just get a merger and place it right there. Is that... Oh, no, it's in, it's in a bit. It's about there. Okay, cool. So this will have to come in from the left. So that we're merging out to the left. One, two, three, four. I'll be splitting... We'll be taking in from the left. Yeah. <laughs> this will make sense in a second. If it doesn't already. Alright, two. And then we need a little baby one. Ah, uh, I'm falling. God, I hate the hover pack. I hate it. <laughs> that is connected, right? Yeah. Alright, last bit over here then. So, one splitter there. Coming in from the left. So now, each of these needs a floor hole pretty much in between. And that can go away. We'll start with the Mark V belt going into the top. So this is taking stuff out. That's the merger. That's the crystal oscillators. And this is the ingredients in. Okay. So now what we have down below is we can connect up these belts, like so. It's coming up. Oh, right. It actually... I thought it would just would have auto-snapped, but I do need to tell it to go in. Okay, fair enough. I thought it would have auto-snapped. When it was snapping, I thought it like auto-decides if it's an input or output. I think it normally does, but maybe because there's just a bit of a gap, it still gives you the flexibility to change that. So that's nice. Yeah, it works out very elegantly indeed. So, the very last thing then would be just putting on the regular jetpack. Let's just hook these up. In fact, we'll start like this. How far can you go to there? So, those are our three input lines. This will be our one output line. And you need to go in, you go. Nice, it fits. You'll stop just beforehand, about there, and go up to your buddy. You'll stop at the same level, but you'll go up even higher. And can you make it all the way? Oh, I'm out of Alclad, but I think it will be able to make it all the way. If we just do this, for instance. Oh, maybe not. I'll check in a sec. Let me go get that Alclad, and then uh, I can finish that off. All right, I'm back. So, let's see now. We'll go to right here. Yeah, it's too high. But we could just do an elevator, right? Would that really matter? I like a little funky. Let's get rid of that one. They can't really have an elevator. I mean, there's actually a way to compress an elevator into two layers. Ah, it's fine. Um, okay. That's that. So just to get a bit of distance, hide the UI for a second, this is what we got. We have four lanes. Three are input lanes, all heading in. So let's just follow one track, for instance. One goes in. It goes up to this splitter. The splitter splits it into this floor and also sends it up to the next floor. So that's 50-50. So 50% of it is going this way then. And it goes into here where it gets split between left and right to bring it down into 25%. And then that gets split into 12%, it goes that way, and or 12 and a half, and 12 and a half that way. So that's splitting it eight ways. That should be as even as it, we can get it, 
from traveling on one line. All right, so I'm just on the second logistical floor, near the top floor, and uh, it's pretty much done. It's the exact same layout as it is below, so it should just look pretty much like a carbon copy of itself. Pretty much does. The only difference is that this one had elevators coming up to it, you know, but its layout's the exact same. If you stripped away the elevators, you wouldn't know any different. Um, and then above it, we obviously have our manufacturers. So that really is the manufacturing floor done. The only thing that would be left to do is number the machines and make sure their power is hooked up. But I can do that at some other point. So we'll just knock that one off and say that that's done. So all of our crystal oscillators will flow along that belt. Oh my god, that hurt a lot. <laughs> I hate the hoverback. Anyway, it'll all flow out along this belt and flow out downstairs come down here. So the next thing is really doing the miners and getting the material to come into the factory. And then we can do the sorting and logistics. All right, so I'm going to head over to the quartz miners. So since the last episode, I've actually tore down the little mining hutches that I had. I like them, but because these are so close together, these two deposits, it didn't really make sense having them separated and it just made things kind of awkward. So instead, we'll make it all one and I'll rotate this one this way because we're going to send it out this direction. So I I think that the floor holes have to go roughly here and here. And then we'll create an input. So one of them is just going to have to line up with that one and the other one, the other one. Okay. So we'll just get it to the... It needs to go into the center. Two. And in you go. Alright, so that one's basically hooked up. And this one's just going to do the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's a little awkward, I guess, with the way the other machine is, but we'll come to about here. We'll just bring it along this way. Would that be right? I guess so. Turn it until it gets here. And aim it in. Yeah, not really sure how I can clean that up any better. I almost think this would look better, <laughs> as weird as this is. But just literally rotate it the opposite way and just have it fold around itself. These things matter. <laughs> One, two. I think that's better. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Alright, so that's the two miners hooked up to go down this way. And we just have to drag these floor holes down. Now... Yeah, I guess we could put the floor holes here again. Okay. That's going to come down one last time right down here. So just get rid of these for a second. And what's that doing? I don't even know what this is doing anymore. Let's get rid of that. I think it was um, powering on the hard drive. Cool. Alrighty, we are in business to start making... How much is it? 600 crystal oscillators per minute. There are 27 machines. They actually have power. All right, so I've got the plates. So I've got everything I need. Um, so yeah, let's just head over to the copper first. It should be pretty easy. It's gonna autosave while I'm midair, isn't it? Uh, land. All right, I've got 11 bullets. One, two, three, four. Good. All right, here we are. This is the first copper deposit. This is just a normal deposit, so it's all we need. We only need 120 ore, and it needs to go over to the water extractor. So getting it over there... Yeah. I've got an idea of how I could do that. I could build a little bridge. I've actually blueprinted a sort of a... This is a while ago. I wasn't sure if I was going to use it or not. A connection bridge with a belt built into it. So it's a bridge for us to walk, but underneath you can see it's got like a little belt in it. So I'll just connect this straight over there, and it could just feed into the factory. I think that would look good. Alright. 
Now, people recommended from the last episode, and I don't know why I didn't think of it. Just build our foundations first, and then we can build the mining hutch thing on top of it. Which makes a lot of sense. It almost makes too much sense. So that's what we're going to try and do. So foundations. We'll just get a... Uh, I guess a tier 2 foundation is fine. Snap it to the world grid. Bring it out this way. And our mining hutch is a 4x4, four four, so if this is the ore deposit, I think I need to come over one this way. And if I use my hover pack... There we go. So let's just chop that bit away for now. And even this bit. Alright, so blueprints. Cosmetics, minor enclosure. So there we go. So I'm leaving the foundation on this. This will give us a four foundation above the ore, but I think that's totally fine. Okay. <laughs> it seems to work. And the bridge will just come straight out. And that is aligned with the world grid now. So this is going to be a copper miner. Don't know the number of it. I guess we could check really quickly. All of the copper nodes... Oh my god, what's happened here? Trucks have run out of fuel. Oh, that's bizarre. They get fuel from here. I wonder did fuel not make it there for some reason. They all ran out around the same spot as well. So I'll just tentatively call this Copper Miner 3. I'm sure I could change it eventually. Anyway, so in here, now we can get... We'll just take away the bit of the floor. So we can see there's our thing. And we just build this right here and rotate it out. Boom. Just like that. And this place is hooked up with power and everything already. Pretty much. So the light should have power. Yeah, so to get this power, we connect this to... Is it the left side? It's the left side. There. And that'll be it powered on. So in order to actually power it on, we just need to hook this pole up to power. And there's power right here. So you could just do that. Something I might do as well, actually. No, that's fine. Yeah, I won't hook it up to power yet, because I don't want anything running until we turn everything on at once. Um, so, we want to build that bridge. So what I'll do is just add this out to here. as a bit of space for us to walk. And then, I don't know if this is going to snap in or work nicely, but let's see. Uh, there we go. And it just needs to shift over one. So it'll have to be there. Yeah, that works. I think. And it's aligned to the grid and everything. So it just means that when this comes out, it'll have to just feed underneath. So I might just even make a little floor hole or something. Instead of coming directly out here. Because I think in theory, it's just heading straight out this way, right? Yeah. be really nice if it just lines up. I think it probably does. Oh my god. I am a genius. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll dress this to make it look a little bit nicer and we could either floor hole it so we just don't see it. Something like that. So that's the end of what we get. Or that's what we end up getting. And then we could just keep walking. We go into our little miner hutch. And now we can just blueprint this bridge all the way out. Um, so connection bridge with a belt. Blueprint mode. That's the next layer over. Can I actually do it this way while looking in front of it? It doesn't seem to want to let me do that for some reason while I'm in front of it. So we've got a belt inside of it. And if I do something very clever indeed, which is just hook up my power line here. So... It's basically, we. I first built this over at Blue Crater Oil when I did the big oil train episode. And people said they really liked it, so I decided to blueprint it. Now, interestingly, if you notice something about the cables, when you blueprint cables, they don't slack. They don't, uh, they get fully taut. You know, they get, the cable gets fully tight. Um, you'll notice when I connect this one, it'll slack. I wish you could do that yourself, because <laughs> it looks really good when you just have super tight cables like that. 
So, interesting little workaround is if you blueprint it, it'll do it automatically. But now, I can just fly all the way out here, because this is just going to keep moving power along. Which is pretty convenient, and that way I can just look inside and connect the belts. No big deal. And I'll probably put some, the bits where the cables slack, I'll probably put pillars down. And that'll make it look a bit nicer too, and that's not just hovering. So, I don't know where that's actually... That's the mains la main power. So we'll cut this now. That cuts off my power. But what I can do instead is just bring this up to here, connect that underneath, boom. And now power is back online, being fed through the bridge rather than through the poles. Which is a bit neater. Uh, See, so yeah, I can get rid of that pole, get rid of that one, and get rid of the ones in the water now. So while I'm making my way over, we'll just grab the belt. It's a Mark V belt by default. Oh, I just realized the problem though. Is the belt going the wrong way? It is. <laughs> so it's actually going the right way from the first one, but I must have rotated them wrong. I, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I haven't actually thought about that in the Blueprint Designer. I need to like give myself some indication of which facing direction I'm using. Because the belt's going to just go the wrong way. But not a big deal. You know, the conveyor poles are there. It's going to make life a lot easier still. So I'll have to get rid of this. We'll just use a regular foundation. Just connect it. Vertical. Slice it all the way down. And that way I can just snap this on a little easier. And we can get rid of that in a moment. Right. So there we go. Okay. So now we just basically flow out this way and continue the connection all the way across. And we hope for the best <laughs> that this will uh, kind of connect itself up nicely. It does really nicely already connect to the logistics floor, which is underneath the factory. So it's goddamn perfect. <laughs> it's looking really good right now. Uh, so what am I missing? I'm missing some more steel. Connection bridge, snap in. Perfect, oh my god, perfect distance. Now, I was intending that this was going to take in the copper ore, but instead now we're actually at the exact height where it needed to be anyway, which is just the weirdest coincidence, because I just didn't plan it. You know, I'd like to say I did, but I didn't. <laughs> let's be real. But we can use our coveted ceiling mounts now. So let's just grab this, stick that in there, default. So the thing will probably come down a bit, which is fine. And we're going to travel along the center here. Oh, it's so perfect. Alright, one there. Maybe every three. One, two, three. One, two. Now, if I need to tidy this up a little bit, obviously, you know. Things might have to change a bit, because I feel like without having planned this, it's just working out a little too well. And I'm not really considering the Caterium ore and where that's going to be traveling. So there is other factors to this that means that maybe it won't be as smooth as I'm thinking, but we'll see. Alright everybody, a little bit of time has passed, and I've just added in this very, very temporary looking road here. It's actually raining through the building, I guess. Uh, that just feeds down into the truck depot. So this is where Caterium Ore is going to go. They all say Caterium Ore, but it'll probably go into the first one here. And then that's going to get distributed just somewhere over there to feed into the refineries. Uh, so we have to go and source that ore. So that's why I've just hooked up a road here, because one of these trucks is going to be doing the delivery. And um, it's not too far up the hill here. So I'm not too sure how far I'm going to build the road in. At the moment, I've just left it to here. And we could just go on uh, the regular land. Up to that point, it's fairly steep, though. Hopefully, the truck's able to get up this way just fine. I can't jump up here properly. Um, so, yeah, so I just have a truck waiting here for us. So, we'll just drive up to where we need to go. And get building our little mining hut. And then two miners, and we should be good to go. So, this is the route that's going to roughly have to take. They haven't gone too far. This is a slug floating over there. Let's just have a look. Oh, yeah, the Caterium's just on my right. There it is. That's the boulder for it. Cool. Uh, might as well grab that slug if I can. I actually don't have the space. I've got no inventory space right now. So let me just blow this up. Huh. The other one is right there. So there's the two of them. 
Perfect. A lot of grass here. But like I said, inventory is just super full right now, so I can't really do much about it. But let's just put down our world grid foundations first. We'll use a two foundation for that. That's fine, because we're going to build on top of it, remember? Hopefully this will work, because it's a little bit over on the side. It's got to be a 4x4, four four, okay? So I'm hoping that'll be good enough. Um, maybe I could just get a lookout tower as well? Alright, cool. So, blueprints... Cosmetics, Minor Enclosure. So we'll send it off to the right. It's just going to go into a truck depot anyway. And the two of them will feed into one combined depot. So hopefully this will work. I'll just hop inside and make sure that the Miner can actually be placed here. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's just kind of on an angle, so that might be a bit tricky. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, seems to work. Alright, good. We are golden. Alright, so just to be super quick, now that the mining hutches are down, uh, they need to be hooked up to power, but I've also just added two belts feeding into one truck station right now. That'll basically feed in... Well, I need to go get power shards and give them some power, but I also have to draw power up here, so I'll do that at the same time. Uh, and then I'm going to make the truck route. Uh, we've got ramps here to kind of come down off of it, and then a little ramp to get up onto it. Uh, so that should be totally fine. It's just a really super temporary placement while I dress this up in between episodes to make it look nicer. But the principle is the same, which is, you know, obviously this is just going to be powered here, like so. Power that. And get power to run over there. So that effectively allows us to hook up our miners. Just have to get inside and make sure those cables are connected as well. So it's... This one needs to go into there. So that'll be good to go. So I have to go get some power shards just to make sure I overclock these. They're both doing 120. They both need to do 240. So I need to move them to 200%. Uh, but once I do that, they should be good to go. They're a little sunken in, as I mentioned, which uh, maybe I'll try to fix that or change it. It wouldn't be a terribly difficult fix. It would just, instead of using a foundation 2, it would need to be on a foundation 1, but it does mean removing the whole thing once, which would suck. Anyway, I'm going to go grab those power shards first, and then I'll draw, drag power lines back up here, and then we'll drive the route. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I was actually just about to go out and power it on, and the sun was setting, and I was like, oh, it's such a shame, it's nighttime. But then I realized I hadn't even hooked up a lot of the different factories to each other, so I've just very temporarily hooked everything up so that the manufacturers will get their goods. I'll show you what I mean in a second, but we should be good to start powering this bad boy on now and getting our 60 oscillators per minute. So it all comes down to flicking this switch here. Alrighty. So the first thing is that our copper ore should start flowing out 120 per minute as the first drill goes down. And there we go, we're flowing. Now it's going to take a while, obviously, for the copper ore to be fed all along this bridge. But we've got a few things to do while we're waiting for it to get here. Now, not just that should be happening now, we can see that the quartz miners are actually on. Sorry, the quartz constructors that are going to change it into quartz crystal. Are the miners up there on? I actually can't tell, so let's just... Oh, it looks like they are. We're seeing quartz, raw quartz flowing down into all of our machines. 27 in total. just opened up my excel sheet just to get all the numbers correct but that's going to be 27 constructors one of them underclocked to 66 percent i don't even know if i did underclock any of them i'll just check in the ones on the end because that's usually what i do uh it looks like they're all 100 percent i'm sure if i underclocked one of them i would have marked it so let's do that so one of them has to be 66 percent 15 per minute and then we'll just update the uh, the label. If I've made a mistake with that, we'll fix it later.
Okay, so that's our 66. Alright. Are they both flowing, just to double check? Yeah, it looks like they are. Oh, you know what? I don't think they have their power shards yet, so let's do that as well. We're not getting enough quartz out of them. So the total raw quartz that we actually need for this place... Um, how much is it? A thousand. Yeah, it's a thousand. So each one needs to be doing 500, but we'll stick them up to 600 anyway. Let it just get backfilled quickly. That's more like it. Alright, so that's going to flow down and fill up all of these constructors nicely. We'll follow the chain in just a second. There's one other thing to do with the trains really quickly. Which is... Is this the incoming station? Yes, it is. Imports. Alright, so, timetable. We're going to get the turbo train. Edit the timetable of the turbo train. Add it to the imports here. And then send it to the oil plant exports again. Okay. So they're loading. This is imports, so trains should be set to unloading. Now, if I recall correctly, turbo fuel should come out the first carriage. That's our rubber. Let's set these to unload. All right, cool. So you may have noticed there's two here with rubber. They need to be hooked up to their belts. This is a temporary job, so it's just going to be this one only. But that's going to be rubber flowing now. So rubber and quartz are activated. The next step was the refinement process. So we can see, there we go, the rubber and the quartz are flowing along together up towards the manufacturer. So let's see what's going on now with the water, the water extractors, the copper ore. Has the copper ore made it to the first refineries yet? If it has, it should be beneath us. So let's check downstairs first. Water is powered on. Love to see it. Oh man, it feels so cool. All right. Not seeing any copper ore yet. Looks like we're still a bit too far away for the type of belt we're using, obviously. So no copper has flowed in yet. I think I did just see it, though, in the distance. Yeah, there it is. Slowly moving towards us, but it's here. It'll be here in a moment. So, yeah, this will be an interesting process to follow then. So once the copper starts getting fed into those refineries, it gets turned into copper ingots. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's an ice cream truck outside. I gotta go. <laughs> um... But yeah, it should get turned into ingots, and then that'll get refined again into... Oh, the water has made it here very slowly. Oh, yeah. It should actually fill up all the machines pretty much at the same time because of the way the pumps work. Yeah. All right, cool. That's good. I'm excited to see this um, ore traveling inside. Because this is the largest multi-stage refinement I've done yet, you know? Even uh, aluminum's pretty close, though, I think. Nice packed belt. That's how I like to see it. And then we'll start feeding it up just in a moment. So this is the really the start of the chain. Copper ore, 120. Water, 120. Mixing in to get ingots, 300. Alongside that with the other inputs would be the raw quartz, 1,000. We give us gives us 600 quartz crystal per minute. The resin and the water back at the oil processing plant is giving us the 420 rubber per minute we need. We've actually got a thousand rubber on that train coming in all the time, so not a big deal. Now the reason I just hooked up um, turbo fuel to it was so that we can make sure our truck gets moving. So the truck is moving. Good. So the miners up here should start working on the Caterium ore. And that truck's going to follow its path up here, get its thing, and then come back. Now, I've had a bug with the truck. Remember we had a look earlier in the episode, and there was three trucks without fuel? That was because I've got a bugged truck. It says it's driving. I went out to this location. It's not there. It's seemingly at, like, zero, zero on the coordinates. So it's obviously just, like, an invalid location. That's zero, zero, right? Zero, zero on the coordinates. World grid. Its X, Y position has been reset, or it's gone off the charts for some reason. And the game ha can't really handle it, and for some reason it still thinks it's driving, so it's not getting reset. I can't find it, so I can't delete it and put it back on. So what I had to do was drive out to the transport hub that I have, which is all the way down here. Or sorry, not drive out to it, go to it, build a truck, hook one up, and send it back around. This is out of fuel as well. Ideally, drones are going to refuel these stations anyway in future, so it should prevent having to deliver things by truck. Um, anyway, so let's have a look at our refiners. 
None of the manufacturers have turned on yet, I wouldn't have thought so. Although, they're getting fed their quartz crystal and their rubber. This is everything we hooked up today. Nice to see it all flowing up, but it's going to take a while for the copper sheets, or the AI limiters really, to get moving. So let's run downstairs and see have we got to the second process yet. It looks like we have. Some copper sheets are actually getting made already. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm making a mistake. This is the Caterium's. Yeah, so Caterium's actually even been delivered already. Nice. That's damn good. Didn't expect it to get delivered so fast. I thought it would take two trips before it starts coming down here. Anyway, but yeah, copper sheeting ingots are being made here. Am I out of my mind? Where are ingots made then? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, ore to ingots, ingots to sheets. I don't know why I made a mistake. So this row is doing the sheets. So yeah, sheets have been made. The sheets are flowing out underneath. Great, and that's going towards the assemblers. So the assemblers are going to require quick wire and sheeting, right? Isn't that what it is, I think? Let's have a look at the Caterium ingots are there flowing in. Quick wire should be getting produced and flowing out. Yep, all looking good. And it's going upstairs into the assemblers. Excellent. Is an AI limiter just quick wire and sheeting? Apparently so. Well, they're getting their quick wire, albeit slowly, but as these things power up and power on, and we get our second batch of ore delivered, the truck is actually unloading right now, so that's great. So Caterium ore is, should be flowing up. There it is. We'll have to put some walkways up here for me eventually. So there we go. There's the Caterium ore coming from that truck station, flowing along, getting divided up evenly between the two different rows, ten refiners each doing Caterium ingots. It's awesome. Everything seems to be working. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Normally I have to put out fires all over the place and be like, oh, this isn't working. But I guess it's early. I don't know if everything's working yet. We still have to get to the manufacturers. That's the final stage, right? So the fact that they're all starting to make Caterium quickwire that's a good sign. Our first AI limiters should have made their way out by now, I would have thought. Although it can take a while for the quickwire to get up here, I guess. 0%. 13 quickwire. I've got quickwire that I could just feed it manually, but that'd be cheating. Can't be do Oh, this one actually, I did produce one. So yeah, that means some of the AI limiters have gone upstairs, which means we may have our first crystal oscillator. Not yet, but it might be on the way. This is the AI limiter belt that's just obviously doesn't really have anything in it right now. <laughs> so I guess we just got to wait for that. Um, so turbo fuel, has it arrived yet? Doesn't look like it. Could keep an eye out for that turbo fuel train, actually. The reason I want it is it just needs to feed the station to keep the Caterium flowing. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of problems. Hang on a second. Oh no, <laughs> I was saying I'm getting good. It looks like our trains are after having an issue. Something's gone wrong. A signal error may have occurred. Yeah, it seems like it did. Well, that's a shame. I'll have to go out there and check what's going on. There's our AI limiter just flying, flowing along. Right, I'm going to take a moment. So I'm going to fly out to the uh, trains and see what the hell's going on. I'll have to make a train actually probably have to flow along there. Can I make one right now? Yeah, I've got motors. So I'm just going to make a train. I'm going to go along the route, see what's going on with those trains. There's obviously some sort of signal issue. I'm guessing Blue Crater Oil is after backing something up. Now, everything flowed totally fine until I told the turbo fuel train to actually go this way. So I don't know why that would happen. Because other things have been going this way before and it's never been an issue. All right, so I fixed the train problem. It's kind of... Difficult to say what was actually doing it. Um, I haven't really fixed it. I've just kind of patched it as a temporary solution. So effectively what seems to have happened is there's so many trains here all at the same time that the signals have all gotten blocked. I'm not really too sure why it's just happened now for the first time because this has been running for a very long time. I'm talking like 50 hours. Never had this issue. The only difference is now I've told this train to go to the Crystal Oscillator Factory. This is just the turbo fuel train. All it has is one carriage, and it hasn't made one delivery yet. 
So I'm not sure, like, nothing's changed around the oil processing plant. They're all rolling the same. I know it's obviously difficult for you guys if you can't see the full network and stuff, but very strange. But what, what I got it, how I got it flowing again was I removed the path signals and just put down block signals, which is going to slow traffic big time. It means that really only two trains can enter at a time and only one train can pass the junction at a time. The junction's a very busy junction, even if you're bypassing the factory or not, you know? Um, so it's going to slow down traffic a lot. Now, if you remember, that power facility is... That oil train that has 13 carriages is really needs to deliver on a set timer. Otherwise, the fuel generators will slow down and, and cut out eventually. So it's a bit of an issue. You can't leave that not running for too long. Otherwise, power everywhere will trip. So I'm a little concerned about that. I didn't actually check like what's in the tank or anything, but the blue crater oil truck is or uh, train is going to have to go a pretty far distance now, get its stuff and go back, and hopefully power doesn't trip in that time. Anyway, might as well just ride the rails here with the turbo fuel coming up to this factory now. Um, and we can see how, how many crystal oscillators we've made. It should be just ramping up and speeding up and eventually just be 60 per minute, one per second. You know, we should just be able to look at that storage container and as we count in seconds we should see crystal oscillators fill it up pretty much so the rubber train is just ahead of me actually here which is good so there she is it needs um a lick of paint but once we get its outer shell on it it should look pretty good but I'm seeing a lot of green lights which is a good sign a lot of things are just working. Alright, so this train is going to stop just outside the station. Which clears the path, actually, to get through it. Wouldn't clear the path if the rubber train stopped thinking about it. So I might have to reconfigure how this is going to work, but... Good to know. Alright, so it looks like crystal... Uh, quartz crystals after getting backed up. Rubber's backed up. So that means that's the quick... It's the AI limiters, sorry, that are... The ones that are not getting backed up. But we're seeing a lot of them zoom along, so that's good. All seems fine. So very quickly, I'll just test one last thing at the end. I just saw a crystal oscillator fly out there. I'll see how much is in here. Hey, we made 73. That's not bad. There they are. We have automated crystal oscillators. Now the goal of the next episode will be getting our logistics just a little bit more refined. And also making sure that I've got my numbers right, because the assemblers are definitely taking a little longer than I'd hoped to get up to 100%. Let me just check those constructors downstairs. And the refiners. So the constructors have their ingots getting backed up. Yeah, that's good. So I guess it's just a matter of the manifold's just going to take a while to fill up. That seems to be the case, just from observation. Which uh, is totally fine. So the first ones here, yeah, they're backed up. The ingots are flowing. I'm sure the refiners are fine. So I'll just check all this stuff in between episodes. But there you go, guys. That's going to be... Well, just last thing, I guess. Just have a look at the manufacturers working. We never actually had a look at them. And then I'll start designing out, trying to make this place look a little bit better. So that's going to be the ventilation floor. That's the logistical floor one. We got manufacturing one. Let's go up to the top one because it's brighter. Logistics two and manufacturing two. Bonk. There we go, I'm seeing green lights. Saw a couple of yellows in the back, but that's alright. To be expected as the manifold goes from where we are to the back. Just lacking those AI limiters, but everything else is, is backed up. It's good. They're all powered on. Nice. It works. It all works. <laughs> Trains maybe not so much, but everything else is working. Alright guys, it's going to have to be it. Um... This is a crazy logistics episode, but I feel like I actually got it done pretty quickly, considering the amount of belt work that had to be done today. And uh, in the next one, we're going to, like I said, pretty much do some of the logistics, dress the place up a little bit. I'll do some of that myself, but some of it on screen too. And then we're going to look for a location within this factory to also build a radio control unit factory. You know, a little mini room that does that. As far as I know, radio control units will take the crystal oscillators we make, but we'll also have to ship here via rail some of the aluminum casing that we've got loads of at the aluminum factory and also some circuit boards. Or we could go with this recipe, keep it simple, and just use the crystal oscillator computers and aluminum casing. We make computers already in the... Uh, I mean, these two things will actually be coming from the same place, the computers and the circuits. Just depends which one I've got more of to spare. And then we'll be manufacturing 
radio control units and we'll be able to do the next milestone. <laughs> it's been a long time, I feel like, but yeah. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Welcome all suggestions, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Consider liking it if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and if you want to support even further, consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get early access to my videos, ad-free, and also access to my Discord, where we've just set up a new Valheim and Satisfactory server for people to play on. Hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future. Either way, I appreciate people just watching this far into the video. Thank you.